Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Jennifer Taylor so admirably introduced me, I'm uh, Henry Arndt, and this is the gold standard of multispectral remote sensing. Uh, now, what we have featured here are uh, two types of imagery showing essentially the same thing, and that is the Cripple Creek Mine, approximately 20 miles southwest of Pikes Peak. Now, on, uh, on my right and your left, uh, you see the uh, Aster imagery, uh, which is obtained from the Terra satellite network. And uh, on the right, you see uh, the digital globe imagery from Worldview 3 satellite. Now, uh, there are some important differences between Aster and digital globe. Aster imagery is free online, which is a tremendous advantage. Uh, however, it's got 30 meter per pixel resolution, which is uh, not outstanding. Digital Globe, on the other hand, has uh, is very expensive and focuses only on a specific area. That said, the quality of the resolution is seven and a half meters per pixel, which is outstanding quality. And uh, Digital Globe is a highly prized asset for all sorts of presentations. Like, as a matter of fact, if you visit the Digital Globe website, you get to see uh, how they've done things such as interdict uh, human trafficking on uh, slave fishing boats, which is really incredible, actually, that they have that detailed uh, resolution. And in Aster, you should manually process the spectral indices in order to uh, ascertain the locations. But there are plenty of algorithms of that that exist online. But digital globe imagery often contains pre-processed indices uh, as par for the course. And uh, however, both of them have a common factor for my project, and that's they contain shortwave infrared imagery. And that's uh, approximately 1,500 to 2,500 nanometers of resolution. <laughs> now, uh, I'd like to introduce you to my friend here. This is the boxing mantis shrimp. Now, the human eye is sensitive to uh, like light uh, that's anywhere between 400 and uh, 700 nanometers. 400 for uh, violet and uh, 700 for red. However, uh, the shortwave infrared is anywhere from 1500 to 2500 nanometers. But uh, what this uh, boxing mantis shrimp has in common with the Aster and Digital Globe satellites is he can see all sorts of bands of radiation. He can see shortwave infrared, which is really amazing. So, however, we can't extract data from a boxing shrimp. Uh, we could extract a delicious cocktail, but not the information that we need. The information that we need uh, is shown here. Uh, this is the NV image processing tool, and this is a GIF image so showing some of the steps that I've used. Uh, I process it with bands 4, 6, and 7 in shortwave infrared for both Aster and Digital Globe, and I overlay them at the greatest intensity uh, at the scatterplot function. You know, it's like the yellow thing with a bunch of black dots at the bands 4 and 7 and how they appropriately correspond for the Digital Globe imagery. And in addition, the Digital Globe imagery is coming around uh, here, this is the pre-processed index of aluminum hydroxide concentration, which is really useful. And uh, some of the steps uh, explained in greater detail is uh, it gets the bands of imagery, which is like a short little connection of it. And this is a false color image uh, that actually works great in uh, aster imagery in order to detect gold deposits. The red band has muscovite, which is, uh, the red band has fengitic clays, which are bands five over band six. Uh, the green band has muscovite and the blue band has kaolinite. And uh, the areas of greater intensity indicate the more likely locations of minerals of economic value, such as gold. Now, this is another uh, image that uh, this GIF shows more of the wholly processed imagery and uh, the places where I've ended up finding the gold. <laughs> and what we've got here is uh, what I like to call cyanide and coconuts. This explains 
uh, some of the processes that happen once the uh, gold is actually found. Uh, the Cripple Creek mine historically was a pit mine. Uh, the pit is over a thousand feet deep and is currently a tourist attraction. However, nowadays it's a surface level mine where uh, meticulously logged uh, blast holes are located. They're just small explosions uproot the material. These uh, explosion areas and the detritus is washed down with dilute uh, sodium cyanide. <laughs> And then uh, in order to separate the gold from the tellurium and telluride and everything like that. And uh, once that happens, carbonated coconut shells like these guys <laughs> are used in order to uh, kind of, they're like magnets. They get the gold and uh, they keep it and it's a level of excellent purity. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, we're developing a new process of using remote sensing imagery to make finding the gold itself a lot more efficient. And, uh, this <laughs> and this is the area where gold is projected to take place in both the Aster image, uh, but it's also an advantage to have it in the digital globe image because uh, digital globe's pixels are only about seven and a half meters while the error for being off a pixel in Aster you're a hundred feet off. That's uh, something that people don't want to deal with. Uh, seven and a half meters is doable, on the other hand. Now this is, uh, this is one of the areas of processing that kind of shows how uh, much more detailed the digital globe imagery is. The digital globe imagery, like, you see that area that I call the hammer? It's much crisper and much more detail. And this is the area where I found the clay amphibole, which is band six over band eight. And uh, I found that amphibole has something of a negative correlation between its existence and the discovery of gold. Uh, Muscovite has a closer correlation. You'll notice the hammers really crisp there and really blurry there, uh, depending on the resolution. And uh, the hydroxyl impurities are, uh, again, showing how much crisper the hammer is, but you'll notice the, hy uh, the hydroxyl impurities have areas of really bright intensity. Yellow represents the greatest intensity, or as I always say it, yellow means gold. Uh, so anyway, uh, I mentioned about blast holes, and uh, this is a digital globe image overlain with uh, already logged blast holes, and Again, I went with the same mnemonic, yellow means gold. So wherever they found a high concentration of gold in parts per million, that's where these yellow uh, blast hole indicating icons are located. And uh, anyway, the, uh, this, is, this was something that I did when I was processing the vector data. The vector data has, uh, I created these polygons where there were the areas of really, really excellent yield. And uh, if you're walking in the path of a polygon uh, within the south, center, or north pit, respectively, you should be able to locate massive deposits of gold in, uh, for example, the average yield from a blast hole was approximately 50 parts per million of gold. The yield in the one in the bottom right corner of the center image was 271 parts per million yield of gold of high quality, which, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just off the charts, especially since, uh, since the Crescent Vug and the uh, pit mine with uh, veins of purity have uh, been virtually eradicated due to excessive mining. Uh, now, anyway, uh, the biggest tool I used to locate the gold was the spectral profile. You'll notice that, uh, like, yellow means gold, <laughs> and uh, purple means uh, low intensity emissions. When a spectral profile behaves in this manner, you know, not much doing uh, past 2,000 nanometers, you're not very likely to find any gold in there. However, when a spectral profile <laughs> Uh, behaves like this. Uh, the left image, is, uh, the right image is just a, kind of a blown up image of the left one. 
when a spectral profile bounces at around 2200 nanometers, you're in luck. You've struck gold, ladies and gentlemen. You might as well be Yosemite Sam. Woo! <laughs> anyway, uh, we, anyway, through this presentation, I have discovered how to process uh, imagery and uh, this is a process that can be used all over the world since Aster is freeware data and is surveyed worldwide.